Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Thursday, June 29th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember everybody, we go live on Facebook at 6 p.m. Alaska time, Monday through Thursday. That's 7 p.m. if you are on the West Coast and 10 p.m. if you are on the East Coast. Also, that you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Nathan, how are you doing today? Fucking livid. I'm sorry? Yeah. I hate everyone. Mostly everyone. But yeah, just hate everyone. Is there a particular reason why? Um, yeah, so, um, okay. So today I woke up incredibly tired. I have to preface this with a semi-decent backstory. Like you do. Um, so yeah, I'm fucking dead, right? So I go to, um, the coffee stand and I'm like, alright, I want to try one of those sludge cups because I've never actually tried a sludge cup before and if you don't know what a sludge cup is, it's drip coffee with espresso put into it, right? Mm-hmm. A uh, 12 ounce cup will have two shots of espresso, a 16 ounce cup will have two shots of espresso, and a 20 ounce cup will have four shots of espresso. And Why the, the 16 ounce doesn't have three, I don't know. Anyways, so I <laughs> I decide to get the 20 ounce, and I drink that some bitch right there. Just, just straight out, just down it. Just. I pretty much like I stopped in between and I kind of sipped it a little bit, but like it was gone within like 20 minutes maximum. So, the problem I have though is I hadn't eaten nothing, and I haven't really drinking a decent cup of coffee in a long time. I've kind of switched to tea for the most part because my kidney stone hates coffee. Okay. Um, so the coffee's acting up, and I'm feeling bad, and my guts hate me, and everything's bad, and I end up getting, uh, guys, this is kind of gross, I'm sorry, Montezuma's Revenge, you know? Yeah, I get the, uh, I get the, the squirts, right? Montezuma's Revenge. I, I, I get home, are you Googling that? Yeah, i never nice. heard of it before. It's also, you can also call a deli belly, apparently. That's gross. Anyways, I rush home, use the restroom upstairs in my bedroom, and realize there was no toilet paper. So I called to my roommates downstairs, and they acknowledged me, but I didn't know what they said. Apparently, they didn't know what I said and said what, and then ignored me promptly. Because they're horrible human beings. So I had to run downstairs. Mm. While everything is, you know, still gross. Ah, uh, poop butt, no. Yeah. Poop butt. So I'm going to be taking a nice shower after this. I, I believe it. Well, would you like me to counter your, I, I guess, bad news with good news? Sure. Sure. Um, well, I will. I, I have some good news, and it is news that I mentioned earlier, and I can finally actually announce it and talk about it and stuff like that. I'm getting a promotion at work. Nice. Yep. I thought you were getting a new job. Well, I was trying to get a new job because I wasn't getting anywhere at my current job in terms of, like, making more money promotion and stuff like that. And early last week, one of my supervisors came in and offered me a new position in which I will have new stuff to do and will be getting paid more. Nice. Yay! Yay! So I'll still be at my same office, but instead of being a law office assistant, I will be now a paralegal. Nice. That's that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'm pretty stoked about is that um, my new boss and my new only boss will be one of the only people in my office that I actually like, whereas everyone else I just kind of tolerate. Mm -hmm. So my boss is going to be the person that I actually like. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it a lot. I start on Monday, um, and by probably the end of next week, we have to do some finish other stuff, moving around and stuff like that. Um, I'll have my own office. I won't just be, like, sitting at a desk or anything. I'll actually have my own office with a door and a window and stuff. That's pretty fucking sick. I'm pretty stoked. I talked to Josh because I was like, man, I really want to have some of my really good friend's artwork on the walls in here, but the only piece of actually of like a, a, a painted piece of artwork of josh's that i have is of a naked woman yeah put that up no that's not exactly something that i should hang at work throw it up mm, well i mean I, I could just throw it but no so throw it up. Uh, after i actually get moved into the office uh, he's gonna come in and look and see what he'd want to make and where he'd like to see it placed yeah sure yeah i'm pretty stoked i'll um i'll make you something too yeah 
I'm really good at perler beads. Are you? Me too. It's real easy. It's it's like paint by numbers. Shut the fuck up, alright? <laughs> <laughs> Don't illegitimize my only good thing in art. <laughs> it's You can make cool stuff, though, but you're just like, yeah, it's just putting the pixel where it needs to go. I'm actually really bad with shading, so like, whatever. Well, that's why whenever I did perler beads, I literally just found pixel art on the computer and then, like, looked at it and just put a bead where it needed to go. Yeah. Instead that's, of trying to... That's what I ended up doing, kind of, I had to fill in some things, you know? Like, I I remember working um, at the Alaska Club uh, for a summer fun camp for kids, and uh, when we weren't doing fitness activities, we were doing arts and crafts, and we were doing perler beads, and, oh, fuck, those things get everywhere. But um, yeah. one of my favorite things I've ever made was the Zephyr badge from Pokemon Johto. Cool. It always, uh, like, surprised me how many actually beads you would use, like, on a computer when you're like, oh, it's only 16-bit, you know, it's all tiny, and you're like, that's still gonna take, like, a hundred... And there's never any white or black beads anymore. You can buy them, yeah. I, I have white and black. No, I know, but uh, we weren't getting any. Oh, that's fair. And uh, Sarah in the chat room would like to remind you that a coffee's a very good laxative, and I can attest to that. It's not normally for me. Normally, I can just drink that shit. Actually, I, I eat a lot of things that I probably shouldn't that probably block me up more than they should. So, I mean, Don't. I guess it kind of counteracts it. keeps me normal. You guess? Yeah. All right. Well, let's actually get into some news, shall we? Mm-hmm. Ted. Iran confirms death of ISIS leader Al-Baghdadi. Bag I'm guessing on that one. Baghdadi? Uh, it's Al-Baghdadi. <laughs> Is it? Mm. See, daddy. Either way. Uh, submitted by Middle East Newsman to Our World News. A recent... It's like Baghdad. Sure, maybe, but with an I on the end. Baghdad yeah, I. It's, it's because um, it's the way the, the, the structure of their, their names are. Um, for instance, for a, a while they were calling Trump um, something that translated to uh, daughter or uh, father of Ivanka. Mm-hmm. And... Um, this is probably something translated into into like a something about Baghdad. So I'm going to I'm going to google that while you talk about this. Okay, it's pretty pretty short and simple. A recent Russian airstrike was brought down on the capital where most of the um, Islamic state troops and leaders are being currently uh well I don't want to say held because that, that, that's where they're all cooped up and stuff. Um, it was con confirmed that roughly 300 members of the Islamic State were killed, of which there were several leading members, as well as their actual leader, which is al-Baghdadi or Bag Bag Baghdad. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. And this was confirmed by multiple sources, and he is apparently officially dealt with. Okay. His surname literally means one from Baghdad. Wow, that's creative. Okay. So, he, he goes by a, a couple different names. Uh, Abu Bakir al -Bag Bakir al Baghdadi, Ibrahim Awad Ibrahim al Badri, and they all mean different things. Okay, well, either way, he dead. Yeah. So um, he is also called Al Shaba, which is the Phantom or Ghost. Okay. No, well, I mean, he's, he, he's, he's a ghost their, now. Well, I mean, I guess we get to pick <laughs> our names too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Abu responds to father of, so it was like father of. Or is uh, Abu Al Ivanka was what they were calling him, I believe. Uh, Trump. Sure. Okay. Either way. Um, one one more step. One step closer to being done with the Islamic State. Mm -hmm. Nine. You want to read this one off? Uh, sure. Five-year-old saves his three-year-old brother from choking to death. This was submitted by Rum Business to our uplifting news. Um, I, I I still haven't watched this one. It's all you, buddy. Oh, I didn't even get to watch it. I just knew it was working. Oh, shit. <laughs> you just asked me to see if it was working. Oh, no. I, I, I guess I should have specified a bit more. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> boy, five years old, named Oliver Bevins, who lives um, near Staffordshire, which I, I don't know where the fuck that is. Somewhere in the uh, UK, I'm guessing. He used first aid training, taught at school to, to hit three-year-old brother Stanley on the back three times so that a meatball could shoot out of his mouth because they were eating meatballs. Good job, kid. Um... The boys had been over at their grandmother's, who had left the room briefly when the incident unfolded. And on her return, Oliver told her what had happened. And she was just fucking astounded. Yeah, I believe it. Good job, kid. Way to save your brother. Yeah, no, he completely saved him, at least from brain damage. Oh my god, they're, 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 they're adorable. 
Like my I, brother bit on me. Like the video started playing, and these little kids—they're—they're they're adorable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Especially the the three-year-old. Look at that sweet little face. Oh my gosh. You know, I mean, they, she made some beautiful kids. Good job, kid. Way to be a hero well, to I your brother at five. Better, better term. She's a beautiful woman making cute kids. Whatever. Whatever. I understood. Moving along. Eight. Tom Wheeler defends Title II rules and accuses Pi of helping monopolists. This was submitted by Abscess2 to our technology. So Tom Wheeler, who was the previous chair of the FCC, and he's the one that was replaced by Pi, who is now the one that's trying to, you know, completely dismantle the Title II net neutrality enforcement rules that were put in place in 2015 under the Obama administration. And he is saying that the we need to stop using the term Title II because it's being used as a smokescreen because a lot of people don't know what that means. Um, what Title II is, is we've talked about it a few times before, is instead of saying things like title two um wait where was his actual quote in here um so instead of saying title two we need to actually address what title two is covering such as no blocking no throttling no fast lanes protecting your privacy and having a referee on the field and he also went forth to counter Pi's argument about this is all based on hypothetical stuff. We don't know how much of this is true. And he goes, no, we do have examples of what these big companies would do if we weren't there to keep them in check. In 2005, Comcast said they're not allow allowing any peer-to-peer -peer transactions to happen over the network. This means that I am in no way allowed to send you a file directly. I would have to upload it somewhere and you download it somewhere. Um, the biggest example of this is torrents. So you wouldn't be allowed to use torrents for any purpose and it's not even just like BitTorrent where you're downloading torrents off the internet some regular sites use torrents as a way to better secure download speeds um mm -hmm. some online games use it as the only way to download their game which is kind of silly imo but you know whatever uh at&t and verizon for years blocked google wallet because they had their own competitive service um and when the fcc stepped in verizon tried to sue them over it and even told the court that it wanted a, the company to charge websites for prioritized access exactly what this is being talked about of if you want good speeds you have to pay the internet service provider to allow connection to your website um and it there there's a couple other examples in here as well the main offenders being comcast at&t verizon and charter um um, and those are the ones that are the main av advocates for the removal of Title II. Almost all other ISPs, we talked yesterday about how 40 ISPs have signed a letter saying, no, please keep Title II it in place because it what protects us as smaller companies from the big monopolies. Right. And it, it'll, it protects the people overall, too. Yep. Well, and other things it protects is like your access, your privacy. We talked about how it means that all of the communication services have to be connected to one another to maintain a strong connectivity. It also includes things like access to the telephone poles. So if they don't, if Title II doesn't exist anymore, then sections of it that are in place because of it means that you can prevent someone from accessing the telephone pole because your line is on it. It's kind of fucking rude, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that's why Title II is so important. But he wants people to start talking about what that means, which we have several times. Almost every time we've talked about net neutrality, we've talked about the importance behind it and not mm -hmm. just said Title II this, Title II that. We, we've talked about why it's important. We should come up with a better name for it than just Title II. Well, I mean... <laughs> The, the problem is, is that Title II is such a broad thing. It covers so many different sections of the Communications Act that it, it's an encompassment. It's, it brings it all together in one batch as this is what all of this is. Right, yeah. I mean, I just I feel like with a name like Title II, people are going to be like, oh, man, I don't, I don't know. But if you give it something like snazzy. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm curious, because Sarah in the chat room said, what about Cox Cable? Why didn't I mention them? I'm curious if they might be owned by someone. Um, let me see. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, I don't know what Cox Cable is. It's it's a, it, it's a just another communication thing. Um, it just kind of, you know, I guess, I guess not. They just don't mention it. Maybe they're not as big as it feels sometimes. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. I mean... Com really, the the biggest ones are like Comcast, AT and T, and Verizon. AT and T also just bought Time Warner Cable, so I mean now both of them are considered just it's just AT and T. So, I mean the the biggest ones is you know Comcast in the West, right, and AT and T in the East. 
I, I think. Something like that. Either way. The other thing is to consider is... No, because we had AT&T here, don't we? Not, no, no, internet? No. We have AT&T cell phones, not internet. Oh, okay. Gotcha. We're talking gotcha. about internet to your house. Yeah, no, I gotcha. Um, but the... What, what was I about to say? I lost my train of thought. Oh, and one of the reasons that they're so concerned about this is because of the idea of most people are all already only have one choice for broadband service. Broadband service is defined as having 25 megabytes down and 3 megabytes up, which, by the way, ACS doesn't count on that because they only have 10 megabytes down. So what that means is that technically the only broadband service in, in all of Alaska is GCI. Mm. They're the only ones. And the concern is, is that if you only have one choice, who makes the rules? They do, because they, you don't have another choice. And that's why you'd want a referee like the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, on the field to make sure that they're not screwing you. Right, because it's not technically a monopoly, but it kind of really is. Right. And if uh, Title II isn't there, then the FCC is no longer able to play referee. It's just open. It's an open field. And, yeah, we kind of don't really want that. No, because people like AT&T, Comcast, Verizon, GCI, or whatever your local monopoly is, because I guarantee you pretty much have one unless you're in one of the golden areas, because those are very few, will happily take advantage of you in any way that they can. And they already try to, just with within the rules. Oh. Huh. So. I, I don't pay enough attention to the rules. Sure. Well, I mean, that's one of the things is you shouldn't necessarily be concerned with the rules until the rules are going to change in a way that's unfavorable to you. Yeah. Seven. One in five Los Angeles community college students is homeless, says a, uh, finds a survey. Holy shit. And this was submitted by Simulation Me to our news. Yep. Holy H fuck. Hard times in LA. 20% of them? Yep. Right, that's twenty percent. Yep, this is this is people that are living in abandoned houses, uh, dilapidated buildings, their cars, literally just on the streets. Trap houses, yo. Yeah, basically just anything like that. One in five of your Los Angeles Community College students are living in one of those, and included on that is two thirds of them. Sixty six percent cannot afford to eat properly. And they're well, not... uh, shit. A lot of people can't afford to eat Nathan, properly. Nathan, yeah, you, you can't. If I if I could, I wouldn't be scrawny and eating a lot of shitty things constantly. You wouldn't be like five ten and one hundred and thirty pounds. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you'd, you'd be five ten and the like one sixty that you should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely, or at least a little bigger if I'm uh, actually working out. You know. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no nutrients for your body to feed on. Yeah. So this is a article just discussing the problem. There is currently no motions or anything in place of how to fix it or even anyone that's trying to fix it. It is merely trying to bring attention to the problem. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I feel like this is, this is, this study should be done in more places. Um, cause community college there is, is, isn't, is free, right? In California, I have no idea. Because, uh, like, if they can afford community college, I'm pretty sure community college is, for the most part, free. Uh, there, at least. Um, I This just goes to show that pe people in, in all forms kind of want to further their education. Uh, because and, No, and, it is not no, free. It is not? Okay, so this is this is <laughs> fucked up, because then it make, it, you're, you're telling these people that the only way for you... To, to further in life is to go to college, right? A lot of people believe that. And these people can't even afford to, to, to feed themselves properly, and yet they're affording these classes, they're putting themselves in debt for a degree, and a lot of the times these people are just going to go and get regular jobs anyways. Well, and the other thing is, is that community college is really cheap. Really cheap. Like, mm -hmm most people can scrape together the money for a classic community college but right but you can but you can also take that money and feed yourself and instead go work manual labor and still get as, as much here's money here's the sad thing is depending on how many classes you take like co the community college might be cheaper than trying to feed to feed yourself well mhm mm like there there are depending on where you're at obviously but there are community college courses that can be like the whole course for the whole semester is like $70. I mean that's still like 70 bucks a lot of people who are homeless 
don't have 70 bucks. I don't have 70 bucks, and I have a fucking home. Right, but now compare that to how much it would cost to feed yourself for a semester. I I could feed myself for a decent while with 70 bucks. You would not be eating well, though. You would no, be but eating. I would be eating, and that's yeah. the important thing, is that these people can take these $70, these cheap things that they could use to further their education. Yeah, sure. But they could take these and actually use it to make sure they don't die. The problem I have here is that it costs money to further your education. I'm saying I want free uh, education for everyone. It's a nice thought, isn't it? Yeah. Like, shit, my grandmother gets free education. She's constantly... That's what she does her entire day. She just goes to, to college courses. Man. Jealous. Six. Judges refused to order fix for court software that put people in jail by mistake. This was submitted by BeamDriver to our technology. So a public defender is working on fighting against the courts because of a switch to a program called Odyssey Court Manager that leads to a lot of uh, errors being caused in court documents that leads to people being pro improperly imprisoned. This can be as much as thus them being arrested for a couple days, completely imprisoned for extended periods of time, and in some cases they've been falsely marked as uh, and registered as sex offenders. And the court said, God damn it. The court said that the public defender um, lacked standing to bring the appeal in his own right, so he was outside of his jurisdiction, um, and that there was that even if there was a standing, the plaintiffs did not establish that they would suffer harm or prejudice prejudice in a manner that cannot be corrected on appeal, because that they they have programs in place they can move for correction of erroneous records at any time so even if the program does cause these issues to occur that there are ways to combat it essentially and That's they still stupid well yeah they responded with you ha and they're like you have over 2000 of these false cases of people getting falsely arrested falsely imprisoned false people that are marked as a sex offender and here's the thing is like, it's not just, oh, they got, you know, oh, I'm sorry, you got arrested for two days. Don't worry, we'll clean it up and stuff. It's like, no, you like, if you take someone away from their life for a week, that can do drastic damage to their life. Not only that, but like you're arresting them for being a sex offender. People are going to hear about that. And people aren't going to forgive you if you've been dismissed of all charges. Well, yeah, this can have drastic implications on people's life, which is what they're arguing, uh, why they're arguing for this to be corrected. And the court's like, it can be corrected even if it happens, so it's not a big deal. I, I feel like every single one of these people should be able to sue for defamation. I, I, I mean, probably. I don't know how that would work. It's very, I mean, people sue the state all the time, so... I'm sure I'm sure it happens actually because it can be extremely detrimental to your life if this happens. Now, mm -hmm. even if with a good system, people still get falsely arrested and falsely accused of stuff, but if you know that it is purely the software you are using that leads to this, that should be addressed. Mm -hmm. Because that's a yeah. problem. Yeah, no, it def definitely is a problem that needs to be corrected. So, uh, good luck California. Yeah, best of luck to you. Uh, specifically, Alameda County is the one that's having this issue. Yeah. Uh, I tried to... I don't need a county. There it goes. Oh, come on. Five. Republicans slam President Trump for facelift tweet. Quote, this isn't normal. This was submitted by Betty Boog to our politics. So... Oh, God, here we go. Trump in his normal fashion, and I, I do. It's not normal. His, well, it is normal. It, there you go. I was like, in his normal fashion is what I said. <sighs> it is gross. So I hate this. This is this is bad even for him. Like, don't I try to be fair to Trump when I can? But there are times when it's just like I, I got nothing on this one. So this is the tweet that he sent out this morning. June 29th at 5 a.m. Well, 4.52 a.m., whatever. I heard poorly rated at Morning Joe, Micah Joe, who's a, a, a morning host, speaks badly of me. Don't know. Don't watch her anymore. Then how come low IQ Crazy Micah, along with Psycho Joe, came to Mar-a-Lago three nights in a row around New Year's Eve, and instead of joining me, she was bleeding badly from a facelift? I said no. Why? These are not things that the president should say. 
just Never. in general. Like ever. You know, it's one thing to criticize someone at all, but like people are are now slamming him. Even Lisa Murkowski's like, "Yo, dog, stop." Yep, tons and tons of people are slamming the president over these two tweets. Specifically Jeb Bush even specifically because of the facelift tweet. Like People have started to just roll their eyes at Trump for his comments about, you know, like, you know, people being dumb or whatever like that. But he said that she was bleeding from a facelift. And, and Melania's trying to stop internet bullying, right? Cyberbullying? Yes. And he is a huge proponent of what she is fighting against. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, she, um. This is. Uh, fucking baffling so they should just i i I don't know what to do about this well maybe he, his maybe his twitter should be deleted well here's well i mean you can't i mean it, he has the right to have one there's nothing that says that he can't have it and i mean technically he can say what he wants technically so here's the thing though is that this is calling for a larger call of the 25th amendment which the 25th amendment is the amendment that says the president can be impeached if he is removed from office whether of stepping down resignation or impeachment that the vice president will replace him this is further furthering the call for the 25th amendment to be imposed on this top is like this is like more fuel for that fire the thing is though is that with almost everything else that trump has done and said the republicans have turned an eye to it essentially they've they've ignored it they've went you know it's just trump being trump we'll continue along order of business as oh usual. boys will be boys this seems to have been the 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 straw that broke the camel's back. There are now dozens of Republicans that are calling out against him for this for these comments because he is not just, you know, saying fake news. He's not just saying, you know, I'm being treated unfairly. He's attacking people. He is directly attacking someone. Um and specifically attack like the the most people are focusing on the facelift comment because it is oh because he hasn't done this before right well i mean not not when he was president necessarily like it was one thing of what he did last year and it's another thing now that he's actually in office and it's one thing you know say it's cnn's fake news and now it's another thing to say that she was bleeding from a facelift and saying that in a derogatory fashion because that is a that, that's in a direct attack against somebody and it's fucked up so it's just fucking rude we there i mean sure yeah they've said rude shit about him right right but like come on dude you're the fucking president of the united states be a bigger man well and at this point now it's not just the democrats saying we hate trump we need to get trump out of here now a good number of republicans are like okay you've gone too far at this point you are no one like this is not what the president platform should be doing this is what you should be concerned with this is not how you should act you are the face of the united states and now you are proving just how embarrassing you are at times like oh yeah it's one thing Huge. it's one thing to be ignorant of your position because there's things that no one knows about the presidency besides the people that are in it right and it's one thing to just be uncouth at times like i understand being able to to look away from trump's inexperience from trump's unprofessionalism because it is easy to see that as not just being the status quo of what a standard politician is and then you get to the points of trump where he is a child where he attacks people for being them for just throwing insults at them because he can mm -hmm. yeah it's baffling really i don't and people are still behind him for this this is fucked up well, it's because people like to see him slam people because they see it as genuine and authentic. I don't understand why people can't just care for people. Because uh, we're selfish assholes. I hate everything. I understand. So, we'll move on. Four. Hannibal Buress just had a lookalike attend the Spider-Man Homecoming premiere for him. Ha ha ha! Submitted by Wendy Stowe to our movies. Yep. Hannibal Buress, who is playing a character known as Coach Wilson in the... Well, I mean, I guess it came out tonight. Um, Spider oh, shit! Spider-Man... Oh, wait, no. Is it tonight? Or no, next week. It comes out next oh, week. I'm sorry. Okay. 
uh, Hannibal Buress, who plays Coach Wilson in the upcoming Marvel film Spider-Man Homecoming, um, he sent a, an imposter, a doppelganger, someone that looks like him that is not him, to the red carpet premiere of Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, and not only did he send someone there, he didn't go at all, at all, he didn't leave his house, and two, he also had this person conduct his interviews for him, to speak for him at all of the events, like anytime someone walked up with a camera and a microphone, this guy was on it, and he answered questions, and like, so what do you think of this, and what do you think of that, and this dude, who was not him at all, Answered all of them, including, like, sitting on on a panel and, like, making jokes and stuff like that. Was not him. Dude. This this is amazing. Doesn't surprise me coming from Hannibal Buress. If any of you have watched the Eric Andre show, you'll know Hannibal Buress is one fucking hard dude. Uh, the person who took his place is Joe Carroll. Uh, and was apparently paid $500 for it. What? Yep. <laughs> Well, okay, I would accept $500 if you let me go to Spider-Man Homecoming. Well, and that's the other thing, is, like, he probably would have done it for free. because Hell he's Because, yeah. like, it's huge publicity for this guy, right? Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, he he's a local, uh, he's a small-time local actor and comedian who now has his name plastered all over the place for impersonating Hannibal Buress. At, at, at Mr. Buress's request, but mm -hmm. he, he still got to. Um, Did anyone call him out on it? How did they f figure it out? Well, I mean, a lot of people noticed it wasn't him, but it was somebody who was acting like him. And later, uh, Hannibal Buress came out to talk about it. Not at not at the premiere, obviously. He's at his house because he's just like, I didn't want to go because well, I don't want to go. And so, because the, the dude did over 20 interviews, first off. Yeah. Fuck. So... But he said he's like it. It was it was a publicity stunt. It was a prank. He's like, if I went to the red carpet myself and did twenty plus interviews, you would not have tried to reach out to me or my publicist. It worked, and it worked way better. And I didn't have to fly or anything. I was able to still do the job I was scheduled to do and still promote the movie in a way that is proven to be more effective than if I dressed up and went to the red carpet. It's a win for me. It's a win for the studio and the movie, and it's a win for Joe, the guy that did it. He's like. The movie is getting a met like we're doing it right now. We are giving the movie and him attention because of this stunt. He's not fucking wrong. No, he's not wrong. And it's like, yeah, because we're trying to capitalize on the news of it. And he's like, I my movie gets attention and I get attention, so it seems like it benefits everybody for me to do this. I'll and he's not wrong. No, yeah. oh, this is fucking great. I love this. Yep. Now see, here's the thing though, is that like this worked. You can't you can't do it again. You have to one up them. Well, and and that's the other thing. Can someone else do it now or what do, what do you do next? You have to uh, if you repeat it it's just not funny. You you have to one up him somehow. I don't know how, but either way. You you get All right, so say you're like say you're like Brad Pitt, right? Sure. So no, what no, you no. do here's is how you, you hire Here's how you do it. You get another actual celebrity to impersonate you for it. That's what I was just about to say. Hold on. You, you say you're Brad Pitt, right? Yeah. You, you want someone to impersonate you. You choose Kevin Hart. Sure. Someone who's completely not you. Completely not you. Make them pretend to be you the entire time. Yeah. Just just like, yeah, okay, sure. Or, or, if, you, or if you're like The Rock, you get Danny DeVito. Yeah, and you dress him up like it. You get, like, the fake tattoo and everything. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'd be down for that. Yeah. I'd, I I would accept that and applaud it. Well, okay, it. so The Rock doesn't actually have a fake tattoo, but... You know what I mean. Well, the Danny DeVito would need one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Danny Trejo has fake tattoos. Sure. He, so... he, he puts on fake tattoos for a lot of movies. A lot of his tattoos aren't actually real. Justin Bieber puts on a lot of fake tattoos for every time he wants to take a picture. Well, I mean, Justin Bieber is... Mm. <laughs> not, a, not, a, not a human being. Yeah. Montana commissioner admits to financing scheme designed to kill solar projects. This was submitted by... Oh, you son of a bitch. This was submitted by Strange Attractors to our 
Futurology. Uh, I will get his name since my brain just blanked on it when I tried to say it. What, what is, a son of a bitch. What is your name, sir? Public Service Commissioner Bob Lake. All right, get this man out of fucking office. That they changed recent regulations regarding renewable energy projects. You would have to get a lease and agree to rates to for the earnings. So, like, when you create a solar farm, right? Cause you you agree at to what rate you will sell the energy that you generate to the grid, right? Yeah. You also make that agreement for a specific length of time. Before these changes, the agreement was for a decent rate at 25 years. And then, you know, you could restructure or, you know, throughout that. And then after 25 years is up, you go through the agreement process again. They recently changed it to where those agreements are only made for five years at a time. And the reason that that's a problem is that normally when you are creating a solar farm, you, you get these rates and stuff first. And then you present that to your lenders who are going to give you the money to build the solar farm. Mm -hmm. Five years is significantly less amount of time than what most people are people will be like i'm gonna lend you this amount of money i want to return in 20 years right right at a five-year deal you cannot guarantee that anymore also the now presented rate that is the default rate to be presented is significantly lower 40 percent of what it used to be so it means Fuck like this guy. This yeah. guy's a piece of shit. Get him out of fucking office. So it's like, okay, we will now instead of the 25 year agreement at one dollar per megawatt, or, that's not a correct number. I'm just using it for simplicity's sake. We agree under our previous rules, we would agree to 25 years of power from you at a dollar per megawatt. Under the new agreement, we only will agree to five years at 40 percent per per mega at 40 cents per megawatt. Yeah. Which that those terms, the five years as well as that price point means that basically no one will be able to get funding to build a solar project. This guy's a piece of shit. Because no one will be able to survive under those terms. Oh, this is so just aggravating because we're all trying to be economically and uh, fucking eco ecologically just better. And this guy's literally throwing fucking wrenches into the goddamn machine to fucking break it up so that he can you know pursue his own gains yep so uh, he didn't realize that he was being recorded but he was and he went on to say dropping the rate that much probably took care of the whole thing we won't need to worry about solar anymore the 10 year might do it if the price doesn't at because at this low price i can't imagine anyone getting into it it becomes a totally moot point because dropping the rate that much probably took care of the whole thing we do not have an obligation to assure that anyone makes money. We just don't have that. I would expect a reconsideration motion on some parts of this, but otherwise they should be done. Mm. 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 This is a special spot in hell for you, buddy. Yep. I don't like you either. Go away, sir. Mm. Uh, in terms of a politician that I am some somewhat... Uh, cautiously optimistic for let's go into two the iron worker running to unseat paul ryan wants single-payer health care and a 15 dollars minimum wage submitted by seems legit to our politics yep so this dude's name randy bryce managed something that politicians dream of he put out a video for his congressional campaign announcement he is going to be running in the same district looking to take current speaker of the house paul ryan's seat and his opening announcement so fuck paul ryan his opening announcement video has gone viral and like this is something that politicians dream of is getting a viral video because if you get a viral video because if people are willingly sharing it then it's like oh sweet i'm getting essentially free attention and his opening video has his own mother talking about how under the current state of affairs and if things go forward, she will not be able to afford the medicine that she needs for multiple sclerosis. And then it goes on to talk about the other things that he would like to do. Um, he wants a single payer healthcare system, which basically means that healthcare is very cheap and accessible to everybody because th that's how the rest of the world works, by the way. That's how that's how Canada works with their free healthcare system. It's a single payer. Well, look at the rest of the world money problem. Even though we're more in debt than anywhere in the world. So Yikes. He, Look he, at that military budget, guys. He also wants the $15 minimum wage. He wants everyone to have access to abortion. And he supports LGBTQ rights. 
So, like, I read that and I went, ew, I'm waiting for the, the, the butt on this. Like, all of these good things, but I'm the devil. Like, because normally there are people that are like, yeah, good thing, but you'll have to deal with my really things that suck, too. Dude, this guy, what if he was a Bernie supporter? Maybe, I don't know. Either way, um, because of his viral video, he now has gained a lot of attention that he pre didn't previously have before as we move into the 2018 election next year. It's weird how a lot more people are, are for socialism nowadays. Or socialistic tendencies. I like mean, they saw Bernie Sanders and now people are like, yeah, it's not actually that bad. Well, I think it's because people realize that there's a lot of people that need help. And you can be greedy as you want, but I mean, it's very difficult to actually get somewhere. And there's a lot of things that people are deserving of. Equal rights, decent pay, you know, a living wage. Like, you should be able to at least afford, a, maybe not be able to buy a house off of McDonald's pay, but you should be able to afford to have a roof over your head and feed yourself. Like, that is something that any job should provide for you, is enough money to keep a roof over your head and feed yourself. Can I get a socialist third party that, that runs Bernie Sanders? Probably, I mean, give I'll him. Fucking, I'll vote for that every fucking year. Give him a minute, like, I, I, I mean, it's one thing if you're like, you know, if you, it, those are the two things. That you, like, people should have health care, people should have access to education, and your pay should feed you and shelter you. Now, if you want a new car, you'll probably need a better job. If you want to own a house, you'll probably need a better job, which is fine and understandable by me. But people should be able to have a home. And I don't necessarily mean a single family home. I mean like an apartment. They should be able to afford an apartment and afford proper food with their pay. And currently with the state of things in America, they cannot. And it's weird because, I mean, we still have it a lot better than a lot of places. But that doesn't mean we, we shouldn't be looking to further ourselves even more. Like to make us less just unlikable. Yep. For, for the world as well as the people who unlike each other in America. We're so just fucking, because of the way we are, this, our militaristic tendencies, our, our just competitive nature, we turn everything into uh, a headbutting contest. So, moving forward though, one thing is, is that it's still over a year away. But be aware of who's running and who holds what interest for you in the upcoming 2018 election. A lot of your state and federal representatives and senators, your both your local legislature and your federal Congress, their seats are up next year. If you are tired of things the way they are, consider replacing who's get in fucking office. Get rid of them. Like Go that Montana dickhead. Get rid of them. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's he's not a – he's a local commissioner, which – Whatever. He should get get got rid of anyways. And well, depending on the commission, it may or may not be voted on. But that's neither here nor there. That's an entirely different thing. If you are interested in following the Mr. Randy Bryce, who is looking to unseat the current Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, he is at Iron Stash on Twitter and I stash <laughs> like mustache. He's got my vote already. You can't vote for him. You don't live in Wisconsin. Well, I whatever. <laughs> so. Either way, let's move right along to uh, something else that's equally entertaining, shall we? And that would be... Whoa. Oh, actually, hold on. What? This uh, Randy Bryce, Paul Ryan thing, this was a movie. Was it? Yeah, it had uh, Vic Romano in it as uh, Welcome to Moose Something. Welcome, Welcome to, to Moose... Mooseport. Welcome to Mooseport. Okay, sure. Except, I mean, it wasn't on the grand scale of a, a congressional spot. I think it was, like, mayor or something of the town, but... All right. Either way, Germany blocks Erdogan rally during G20 summit in Hamburg. Damn, this was submitted by Snow's Nothing to Our World News. So... Oh, hamburgers. Erdogan was wanting to have a campaign rally in Hamburg right near the G20 summit. And Germany said, no, no, you keep your politics in your own country. Internal affairs need to be kept in your country. That's why they're internal. Keep your politics in your own country. You are looking to get support for upcoming elections and things along those lines, as well as recent decisions such as the power swing that happened in the April decision in Turkey. We 
are not going to provide you security or a platform to do that. And it's not a matter of we support or don't support what you're doing. It's a matter of you want Turkish politics to be presented in a campaign rally in Germany where it doesn't have a place being. And with the G20 summit occurring in Hamburg, almost all of their security forces, like the police and stuff, are currently tied up making sure that the G20 summit stays secure. And it would be their responsibility to provide security for the rally that Erdogan wants to occur to hold. They also, by the way, said uh, any of the people that were part of the protest assault in Washington, uh, do not bring them to Germany. Yeah, fuck them. Like, literally okay. don't bring them, any of them. Oh, we don't want them God. here. So we don't want your bodyguards here, and we don't want you holding campaign rallies here. So you can you you are expected to show up for the G20 rally, and that's it. Just fucking show up, all right? You are a world leader. Come in your capacity as a world leader, leave, leader and leave the rest of the stuff at the door. I, I mean, and very well they should. Yeah. Good job, Germany. Way to put your foot down. Nathan, what did you care about in the last 24 hours? A certain trailer came out. Is it the one that I have listed? No, fuck you. I'm not going to steal yours. Is it Jumanji? Hell yeah, it is. Yeah, that movie looks awesome. I want to see it. I'm so excited. Like, that trailer, I was like, all right. I don't, it, it's so different from the Robin Williams Jumanji that I'm like, okay, so you share a name and a very slight theme, but otherwise you're completely it's, different. It's a similar theme. Yep. Um, so... We're gonna throw up some spoilers. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this trailer and what happens in it. So if you don't want to hear about the trailer, go ahead and skip ahead a couple. I'm gonna wave my arms like this. Uh, I'm right? gonna hang on. I got this. I, I think I got this. I'm gonna go like this. Uh, if I can spell, there we go. And then I'm going to change the color to to red. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna change this to yeah yeah Times uh -huh. New Roman if I can find it mm -hmm. because Times New Roman is a good font. And then I'm mm -hmm. going to take this, and I'm going to make it big, like, the way I, I need spoiler to fit on the screen. There we go. Bam! There there we go. There we go. Not All right. So, are you ready? Spoilers. It, spoilers. It, it, it's covering our faces right now. Spoilers. Okay. So, we're going to start this off, right? This starts off with high schoolers, and there's, it's like your typical high schoolers. There's, like, your jock, your your outcast, your, your, the pretty girl, and, and the nerdy kid, right? Sure. There's two boys, two girls. Yep. Well... Huh? Yeah, I'm listening. Um, I'm sorry. I, I my headphones flickered when I when you said yeah, so I thought oh, you said. Oh, okay. Um, so anyways, they all get detention and they have to clean out the basement. While well, they're going through the basement and they find what looks like an Atari, right? Mm -hmm. But the controllers kind of look like Sega Genesis controllers. I don't know, it's fucking weird. Yeah. So if they find this game system and it's got this game in it called Jumanji. So they pop the game system in and they uh, plug it into one of those um, those TVs that you'd see strapped to those wheelie carts, you know? Yeah. Just, uh, straight, and, just cathode and they ray each, TVs. They each put in a controller, and they each choose uh, a player. And then they get sucked into the TV, and they get sucked into this Jumanji world, and they all fall from the sky. But they are the avatars they chose. Yep. So the nerdy kid is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's got this badass fucking gun, right? The uh, the jock kid, the black jock kid, is Kevin Hart, and he's like this like backpacky small guy, so he's probably like the the assistant, right? Um, the nerdy girl turns into like this badass monk girl who can run really fast and kick really well and has like ninja skills. Um, and the the popular beautiful girl gets turned into Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets promptly grabbed and eaten by a hippo so i don't know if there's like a respawn feature or not Ooh, shit uh a respawn feature or not in the game but it looks really fucking hilarious yep it looks real funny i'm excited to see it i'm really excited i'm glad that it's kind of a different premise because like i really there's i have a love-hate relationship with with um remakes and redos right because it's like I get it, you're trying to get this nostalgia, but it's the same story, and, like, I enjoy that story the first time, you know, I guess I kind of want to see it redone, but at the same time, it's like, this is appealing to another side, it's like, hey, this is a Jumanji-ish scenario, but we're gonna label it as Jumanji. Yep. It's very and, cool. 
it's it's fucking sick because they're actually they got they get transported to the area and the entire movie is pretty much going to be take place in that area so it's instead of monster um not monsters animals coming out of a board game it's they're going into the game kind of like what happens to robin williams character but we don't actually see any of it mm. so i don't know it's cool i like it yeah it's very cool i'm excited mm-hmm I, I'm way too fucking excited for it. All right, I'm taking the spoiler thing down. Uh, I'm also excited for a trailer, and that is the official trailer for Netflix's, one of Netflix's upcoming series, Death Note. Oh, it's so good! And, like, it's always, I can always tell when something is made by Netflix, because Netflix, because of how they do things, their production quality is just a little bit lower than, like, AAA stuff. Like, you right. can just tell, you know, it's, that... It's double A. Sure, yeah. And it's still good. It's just clearly not like, you know, massive production studio stuff. But it still looks very good. I'm very excited to see this. Um, I actually need to watch the original Death Note because I've not actually seen it yet. Ah! Ah! Ah, I shouldn't be surprised, but ow! Yeah, I'll, I'll probably watch Death Note after I finish. Uh, get... Alright, who wrote my name? Jesus Christ, I'm dying. I'm sorry. I, I will probably watch it after I finish a uh, game on. Um, I watch only it in English. I, okay, I only have because like there's one there's one specific scene that has more oomph in English than in Japanese. Sure. Um, and then I'll reach inside the bag and take a chip are and you, eat it. Are, are you trying to do the scene now? It's fucking. Oh, it's so good. Uh, it also gave us another small glimpse of William Defoe as a uh, Ryuk. Yeah, as Ryuk. And it looks like they actually did a pretty damn good job on that. Uh, oh, I, I've, I can't wait for to see like actually what he looks like because that he's he's like cast in shadow mm -hmm. the entire time. Yep. So I don't know. I'm I'm fucking I'm excited. That's actually both of those aren't the only trailers that came out today. There's one more trailer. I'm listening. It is for Marvels and Humans. Oh yeah, I saw that. And it looks fucking sick. However, I have one problem with it. And that is black bolt isn't wearing his mask mm, well oh well um anyway we're gonna get ready to get out of here we're at 52 minutes we like to try and keep it under an hour first thing i'd like to do is like to thank everyone that was in the live chat room today especially those that shared today's video um so like thank you to my friend gavin from oklahoma thank you to josh thank you to sherry thank you to just everyone that shared it i appreciate you Shockey. that that's gavin Oh, okay. I would also like to thank also um, all of our Patreon supporters. Um, you help the show. You 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 literally one hundred percent. There are some reasons that the show each month only exists because of the Patreon supporters. The show costs a decent amount of money, and thanks to Patreon, we can actually still afford that sometimes. And that is a wonderful thing to say. That said, we would, of course, like more money um, because we are greedy Americans. Not just that, actually, because we'd like to have the money to do more things and keep the show running in such a fashion. That means that we could, you know, well, I mean, do more. <laughs> Um, it's such a, we want to, we call ourselves a daily dose of the internet, but we only do four days a week. We'd like to see that hit five, six, and eventually seven, but we need the financial support to get there. Patreon.com slash daily internet. Of course, if you want to follow us on social media, tw Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all of those are at I read it cast. And you can follow me at Sean Michael, Nathan at Bimenstein and, uh, five star review on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google play or email, which is feedback.iredit at gmail.com, or call and leave us a voicemail at 508-738-2278. Anything before we go? Mm, no. No? All right, everybody. That is your 314th dose of the internet. I'm Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And please remember, everybody. Don't get Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye! <laughs>